Hello, in this video I'm going to talk about the lithium aluminum hydride reduction. And I'm going to contrast it in a couple of ways to the sodium borohydride reaction, which I covered in the previous video. There are a lot of things that are the same about the lithium aluminum hydride reaction. We, we have an aldehyde or ketone electrophile. Uh, it is reduced to uh, an alcohol of some kind, depending on the, the structure. But there are some differences in, you know, not the mechanism, but the, you know, sort of operational details of the lithium aluminum hydride process. Oh. One of the main differences is that if you take a look at this uh, way that I've written the reaction up here, you will see uh, two differences. One is uh, one is that there's a second step, an aqueous workup that is required. Uh, in the video on sodium borohydride, I indicated that the aqueous workup uh, was common, but as far as the mechanism was considered, not necessarily required. We need the aqueous workup here uh, for a really good reason that I'll share in a moment. And so, so, whoops, the reaction is done then in a more, uh, or done in an aprotic solvent. Uh, and here our solvent is tetrahydrofuran, THF, draw the structure of this thing and it preview its name, tetrahydrouran or, or abbreviated THF. And, and the good abbreviation because tetrahydrofuran is pretty big. Right. So why do we need uh, aqueous workup second? Why do we need an aprotic solvent? What is the difference between lithium aluminum hydride uh, or at least the aluminum hydride anion, what is the difference? And the difference is, is that the aluminum hydride anion is more, much more reactive than the borohydride anion in two different ways. Number one, it's a stronger base, and number two, it's a better nucleophile. And you probably remember from your original uh, introduction to nucleophiles that there is some correlation between nucleophilicity and basicity. The reason why uh, aluminum hydride anion is a better nucleophile and a stronger base has to do with the difference in electronegativity between the hydrogen and, and the other atoms. In other words, uh, difference in the polarizability and polarization of that hydride group on, on the central atom in the anion. Right? Not the difference in electronegative, but negativity. Whoops. So the difference in electronegativity for the high, for the hydrogen aluminum bond is 0 0.6. 0 0.6. And the difference for uh, the boron hydrogen bond is 1.2. And both of these are, are in cases where the hydrogen is more electronegative than uh, the other atom. So 
even though uh, boron hydrogen is polarized towards hydrogen, this is actually not very polarized. And the hydrogen boron bond, it's almost considered, an, or is sometimes would be would be in the range to maybe be considered non-polar covalent. But this first bond is also, uh, you know, it's first the first one is definitely a polar covalent bond. Right. The second difference between bromine or between boron and aluminum is in their atomic radius. Uh, let's see, this is be... right. Aluminum's atomic radius is 125 picometers, uh, and boron's atomic radius is 85 picometers. Let's zoom back in here. Um, and I recognize there are other different ways, you know, covalent radius and van der Waals radius and other ways to, uh, you know, measure the size of atoms and in, in molecules. But just to get the big idea, aluminum is bigger. Because aluminum is bigger, uh, it generally forms weaker bonds to, to things. And the, the bond between, you know, hydrogen... And aluminum, thus, because of electronegativity and because of size difference, has more ionic character. If you uh, subscribe to the to the notion that bonds exist in a continuum between covalent and ionic, or here, it's just more polar. And so, because it's more polar, uh, it's going to be better in a lot of ways. Because it's more reactive uh, for these reasons, um, lithium aluminum hydride reacts violently with protic compounds. Right? And if you uh, want to remember what those protic compounds are, these are things that have uh, oxygen hydrogen bonds, nitrogen hydrogen bonds. And there's xenon, halogen hydrogen bonds, and some people might argue sulfur hydrogen bonds and other uh, things that are reasonably on the acidic -y kind of side. Right? So we can't use alcohols or water as a solvent for lithium aluminum hydride. We can't use any product molecule as a solvent, and that's why we need to do lithium aluminum hydride in aprotic solvents. And we can use some polar aprotic solvents. Uh, and tetrahydrofuran as an ether is a good one. Uh, ethers tend to be low on the reactivity scale. Now let's talk quickly about the scope. Right? And we're talking again about what does lithium aluminum hydride react with? And what do those products look like? Let's, uh, let's make some kind of aldehyde. Let's go actually, I want to go up here, grab my reaction arrow from the top. That way I don't have to put effort into keep doing it over and over. Uh, like sodium borohydride, lithium aluminum hydride reduces aldehydes to primary alcohols. It reduces ketones. Uh, let's have a, a cyclic ketone. I don't know. Cyclohexanone. Move it up. To... Secondary alcohols, but unlike, let's wait a minute, we put in here ketones, secondary alcohols, but unlike um, sodium borohydride, lithium aluminum hydride reacts with like 
almost every other uh, type of carbonyl functional group. So, for example, it can reduce esters, carboxylic acids, acid anhydrides, uh, and so on, uh, amides, nitriles, things that don't even contain carbonyl groups. Uh, so lithium aluminum hydride is a voracious terror of a reducing agent. It's the one of the most powerful reducing agents in the organic chemistry world. And uh, it actually reduces uh, and choose the ester functional group apart. And converting the carbonyl part to a primary alcohol but also generating the alcohol that would have, you know, the equivalent alcohol on the other side, which might have these primary, secondary, or whatever. The next video is going to be devoted to this last reaction of esters with lithium aluminum hydride uh, and to present the mechanism of this reaction, which is a little bit different uh, than the mechanism for the reaction of aldehydes and ketones. Thank you for watching.